Last week on Sailing Ruby Rose, we sailed down the Spanish coast from Cartagena to Alicante. We've only got two bars of battery anyway. Two bars of battery, another set of amateurs going out with a half charge camera and a yeah. shopping trolley. Good morning. Good morning. So today was meant to be our kind of being tourists in Alicante day and we've woken up well actually I woke up at 3.30 this morning to some crazy lightning and thunder Nick slept through the entire thing as per usual and this morning it's still pretty grey and it's been fairly torrential this morning but now it's cleared up but it's cool yeah it's really nice as in actually cool not yeah, as just in temperature kind of wise. Samuel L. Jackson cool <laughs> um, so we are taking the opportunity in the break of the rain to go and provision because that is our number one priority. We have no food on board. But hopefully while we're out here we can uh, have a little wander around and show you guys a little bit of Alicante. Exactly. Provisioning is done, and now what are we doing? I think I've got to that. Oh, ramen! That looks nice. In my life. Step away from the ramen. <laughs> uh, Mid-morning ramen. If I um, if the weather's bad, I get tired. I'm like a like a weather vane. <laughs> so like you know when that, those things you get, where the, the little woman comes out the house with the weather's not bad. Anyway. So yeah, I need a, a mid-morning coffee, um, something to perk me up a little. Yes. And then we're going to go and see... The Volvo Ocean Race Museum. Yes, we are. I'm excited about that. That's yeah. going to be interesting. Hello! Hello. <laughs> 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 Yesterday I was complaining that it was too hot. Now I'm complaining that I'm too cold. There's no end to my complaining, but... So, okay, let's go. We're here. We're like, my, like my childhood on a rainy weekend, we go to a museum. <laughs> so, we're in the Volvo Ocean Race Museum, which is a free exhibit in Alicante. And uh, yeah, we're quite excited about this. Yes. <coughs> it's free and it's indoors, which at the moment makes me very excited. <laughs> The Volvo Ocean Race is a round-the-world yacht race held once every three years. The route begins in Alicante and covers around 10 legs and roughly 40,000 miles. It started in 1972 and has become one of the longest and toughest sporting events in the world. So uh, each panel is uh, a little bit of a brief about the, all the ocean races since 73, mm -hmm. with 85-86 uh, being the one that uh, Simon Le Bon took part in. <laughs> he capsized it. Oh, okay. 12,000 miles. Yeah. That's what you call a long hill. Yeah, that is a big old key on, isn't it? Maximum speed through the water. 42 knots. Maximum wind speed, 70 knots. This was in 2011 12. Maximum wave height, 16 meters. Blimey. Just pipe cots. Huh. No TVs, no bread and cheese. <laughs> Any desire to... Uh... No. <laughs> no. So essentially the water curves around and goes like that. 
Yeah. Great speed and then on this one. <laughs> this is how we sail. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> What do the buttons do here? Just light up. Oh, they just light them up. It shows you what bits of the buttons. Oh, okay. I think we already know this. Okay. Yeah, I think if we then it's still strong. Maybe, maybe you should um, test me. Light something up and I'll set it, see if I know what it is. I don't know. Winch? Yeah, grinding winch. Grinding. Boom, mainsail, cockpit, headsail, yeah. Find <laughs> I don't know this. I'm in trouble. You're confirming that so it's two cans of push. <laughs> Could be worse. Found a way to see, learned to cook, learned to navigate, and worked my way up through the ranks, and then ended up being the only woman on an ocean racing maxi in the 85 86 Whitbread Around the World race. Um, when you turn around and you know, and you look at the sky and go, I'm glad he's here. That's a testament to the guys there, and uh, you kind of grow together as a family. I was extremely lucky being able to call upon people from my regiment to go with me. And there's no question about them not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they would have given their life for you as you would give their life for them. You don't just develop a bond with your team, you develop an extraordinary bond with the people that you're committed to beating as you sail around the world. You forget the competition and you, you come together as a group of a few hundred people who you rely on when you're out on the water. The sea, if you lose a, a moment's respect, it will bite you and it'll bite bad. We all do a sport that is in, by its nature dangerous. We were, we're in an, an alien environment, and no matter how much safety equipment we have, or how many times we do safety drills, if it goes horribly wrong, it's still going to be 2,000 miles an hour. It was very, very windy. Transatlantic, uh, we were just approaching the sort of continental shelf. Seaway was, you know, was brutal. Cappy stuck his head out the hatch and said, Avian Amro's about 50 or 60 miles on the port side and they've lost somebody over the side. We need to get the spinnaker down, make preparations to jive and go and help them look. At that stage, we didn't know who it was. I was uh, in Portsmouth in the hotel and I got this call from our team manager at uh, three o'clock in the morning. and. Uh, I looked at my computer, that's always on like the tracker, and there was a little circle, and my heart stopped, and I thought, okay, there's only one thing. Ah, oh, Christ, who the hell's in the ocean? The boat nose dived, you can feel it inside, sort of healed a little bit to windward. Um, obviously, the boat stopped. You hear the water coming down the deck. Um, next thing you know, the boat sort of leveled out, the sail was fogging, you could hear that was shaking the whole rig in the boat. Um, Seb screamed, man overboard, everybody on deck. Basically, just grabbed my harness, threw it on, shot out the hatch, and, and assisted um, where I could. Came downstairs, and my sister was working for the team, and they heard, and then my sister said it was Hans. And uh, yeah, it was pretty unreal and unbelievable. Uh, the breakfast room didn't really uh, survive very well. There is an unwritten rule, code, law, if you like, of the sea that you. It's, it's the importance of life and that if someone goes over the side, you will help. Or if something happens to someone, you will help. It's, a, it's something you don't, don't question, it's just something you do automatically. We were beating into the storm, and every guy in the boat, all we were thinking about is, you know, hopefully whoever went over is going to hang on long enough for the kids to get back, and, and they'll make it. As everyone knows, it didn't work out that way. You know, we got word that Hans Horve had gone over and drowned. They recovered his body, but turn around and, and continue racing. And I just remember that was a moment where, you know, the whole rest of the way, I know the whole fleet was pretty rocked because Hans was such a dynamic personality, and that's when it hits home. The difference in the amount of wildlife is noticeable just in the very few years that I've been sailing around the world. So I sailed around the world in 85, 86, and the oceans were teeming um, with life and bird life and sea life. Less 
So I would say when we sailed around in Maiden in 89, 90, and I would also say I think more debris, more pollution. Um, you know, we've seen areas in the ocean where ships have washed out their tanks, which is completely illegal. I think as humans, we actually enjoy that thing of exploration, adventure. Not doing those things is, is, is abnormal, but then, I don't know, maybe I'm one of those abnormal people that went and did a few barber ocean races, I don't know. It's not like the America's Cup or the Olympics. Every guy looking at every other team knows that that guy will be there for me if I need him. It's maiden. I am defined by those experiences and I'll be eternally grateful and it will be an eternal highlight of my entire life. Um, dramatic as that sounds. That was excellent. Do you know what? I've seen, I've been into a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. It's dark and I'm, I have to get there to see. I've been in a lot more museums that you've had to pay for that are a lot worse than that. Absolutely, that was really interesting. If a free museum, that was pretty cool. That was excellent. Um, Highly recommend it to anyone who uh, has an interest in sailing. And it's starting to brighten up a bit outside. Yeah, there you go. So, this is Sunday morning flea market in uh, Alicante. just walked up through the old town of Alicante and it is absolutely stunning. It's just like take your breath away beautiful. Not what I was expecting at all. I don't know what I was expecting but that wasn't it. Anyway, we thought that there was a cable car up to the castle, which you can see right there, but it transpires that there is a cable car but it goes down on the other side to the beach. So we're going to stop here and just soak up the incredible views I mean look at that it is just absolutely stunning sorry I think I'm out of focus here we go I'm back but here again tomorrow then uh, we'll head up to the castle and if not then we'll be sailing which is also exciting How are we doing? Yeah, good. So we've had uh, three nights in Alicante. Si. Sí. What would we say about Alicante? We would say that Alicante is extremely charming. It is. Extremely expensive. It is. Um, um, lots of atmosphere. Quite. There's a kind of grungy, a little bit kind of bohemian atmosphere, I think, to some of the bars. Yeah, to yeah. To the back street. It reminds you a little bit of Porto in Portugal. Yeah. Kind of a little bit. But a lot of it's up quite upmarket as well. There's lots of quite upmarket. Yeah, upmarket. yeah. It's at the front, then you go back. It's kind of a, it's a bit grungy. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, so yeah, overall, we very I like, much it. like it. Glad yeah. we stopped. Yeah. Um, yeah. So onwards, onwards tomorrow. 
to uh, towards Valencia. Towards Valencia, yeah. towards the end of our sailing season. Oh, no, do you know what? I think it's always good to come to the end of a sailing season and go, didn't we have a brilliant sailing season? Yeah. You know, if you're like, thank Christ for that, I just <laughs> want to get off the boat, buy an RV, adopt a, adopt a rescue dog, uh, and live in the woods. <laughs> that would probably indicate that sailing hadn't been a particularly good, but we had a really good season. Yeah. We've covered some amazing amount of miles. Mm -hmm. I was trying to work out the number of countries that we've seen uh, sailing this season. So from the States to the Bahamas to Bermuda to the Azores, Portugal, uh, Spain. Uh, yeah. Yeah, poor here. So yeah, it's been amazing. And this is kind of like a, a lovely counterbalance to the kind of beauty, but yet kind of culturally different uh, Caribbean islands. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we've had a very varied year, haven't we? Although, all I would say is, I am kind of hankering to get back to the Caribbean. I keep, keep going on about this. We got here and we're like, oh God, look how much ham I can eat. Look how much lovely cold beer I can like, squeeze into my pie hole. But now I'm like, wouldn't well, it be nice to be back in the Caribbean? I am shameless, shameless yes. in my inability to commit to anything. Yes. Um, so yeah, so looking forward to kind of the next couple of weeks, looking forward to the rest of the season, looking forward to actually starting to do the chores on the boats to get her kind of ready for next season. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's lots of things that we've left Left. Until the end yeah. of the year. So the so. old sail right is going to get hammering, <laughs> um, which means episodes with lots of swearing coming up or bleeping. Uh, yeah, all good. So yeah, so we'll be finishing off and setting off tomorrow morning, I think. Oh, weather permitting, as per usual. Yeah. All right, then. Well, let's go and find a lovely lunch. Did your voice just break? <laughs> 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 all right, then. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> okay, then, Pluto, it's time to go. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. Cheers, bye. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of?